Hello there guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make funny renders in the in, uh, SFM. Yeah, uh, okay. So first of all, you have to have SFM, which is a lot of storage, but if you're like me and you have a really cool computer, you have enough storage for it. So, well, you're going to see this, yeah, right? Okay, and um, what you're going to do is you're going to name the session something that is relevant to what you're doing. So like, for me, it is renders tutorial, to be exact. I, I I don't really do that, but yeah. Okay, so you, so once you once you're here, you're gonna see. Once you make the thing, you're gonna see. Oh my God! What what is all this interface? I'm scared. Well, first of all, this. So let me show you. This is kind of this fun tutorial too. So this is the clip editor, the motion editor, and the graph thing. I forget what it's called. What's it called? The graph editor. Okay. So basically, uh, I'll show you this all in a second. So first, what you're gonna do is load map. And what you're gonna do is be your pick a map, which is something like the void, the black void. That's a preset map that you get already. When you um, download SFM, that's a map that you just have. So you're gonna right click, then enable lighting. Okay. You're gonna create a camera, drag it into your viewport, whatever one you're using. And then you're gonna pick a model. So for my case, I am going to pick Dreadbird. And if you want to um, pick a model, you have to click this, create new model, and you have to download the models from Workshop, which you should see as, um, as a button when you uh, boot up before you boot up as a student. So, um, and then another model you might need is the green screen, which you, if you search green in models, scroll all the way down, you already have a model. So, yeah. So if you click on the camera, oh my God, you can see stuff. Thing I forgot to mention. So. When you're using your cameras, so click the word camera, and then you can use WASD to move it. I forgot to mention that, I'm sorry. Okay, so, you may be wondering, wait, why can't I move anything? I clicked on Dreadbear, and I can't move his leg. Why can't I move his leg? Well, buddy, now, that's because you are in the clip editor. That edits the clip, obviously. So, <laughs> yeah, so if you go to the motion or graph editor, that, yeah. Um, for renders, I would recommend using the uh, motion editor, and for uh, animations, I would recommend using the uh, graph editor. Yeah, so, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, get the green plane, or the green screen, you're tilt it about 90 degrees. Then what you're gonna do, this is a really good trick, so you're gonna right click on the root transform, add scale control to transforms, and boom, you gotta scale. You can scale it all the way up if you want. Which is what I do. But, you know. Okay. So now we have a green screen and we have Dreadbear being Dreadbear. Look at this chat. So you may be wondering, Zachary, what, what do I do now? I have my flame model. No, what, what do I do now? So if you want to make renders, this is a tutorial on renders, by the way. Well, not an animation. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna. This is how I know how to. It's easier for me like this. Since I, okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna tilt it about 90, the camera about, about 90 degrees, and you're gonna move your model back far enough where you can see it. And yes, you will have to tilt your head, or if you're cool, you can tilt your entire screen, but I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> okay, so okay, let me get you to use of controls. So control that shows the bones, okay. Look, uh, he's moving his spine because he's so funny. Okay, so control, show buttons. You just left click on it, and then boom. You're you, you, oh, moving that. Some models have really good ri have really good uh, organization, like this model. While others, on the other hand, have really weird rigging, which I hate, where everything is unknown. Why is everything an unknown? Like, for this, I get that, but look at how organized that is. That, that's mm, spicy. I like models like that, but um, that's why if you have models that have horrible rigging, like Vanny here for example, um, you just use control and then click the bone and hope that you pick the right one. So um, now we're actually going to get to posing. So posing, so you have a few options. You could select one, which you can't really move anything with. You could use the move tool, which makes, his ha makes him have an elongated spine. It's pretty funny. Uh, you could use that to move 
to around like here. Uh, you could also then you have the um, rotate rotator tool. I think that's what it's called. It rotates. Then you have um the screen button for some reason. I don't know what that means, but it's basically rotate and the move tool at the same time. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So um. Let's just pose. It, you can move any part that you want. It's just, yeah. Okay, well, I'll cut back. I'll, I'll do the time lapse thing. Alright, once you've gotten it to a point where you like it, like um, this, sideways, but um, where you got to like a pose you like it at, um, so you're gonna be like, well, no, I'm gonna export now. <laughs> no. What you do wanna do first is you wanna enable lighting. And you see that? You see how he's a silhouette with glowing eyes? Not all models have glowing eyes, but you see how he has a silhouette with glowing eyes? That's not what we want. We want actual textures so what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the thing that you did for the model except for the light click light and you're gonna drag that to the screen that is the more that's the easiest way to move it and you can use r to rotate if you have it in sideways mode like, like how i do here then what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to put lights wherever you think is necessary so what i think so for me what i usually do is i usually put lights on the top of the head um from from both is left side and right side. Also, I recommend copying and pasting the first one after you rotate it so you don't have to do that all again. And then you will have something like this. But if you want to be extra special, um, you can um, go down here at the bottom and then boom, you got lights everywhere. But now, well, you think, man, this kind of looks plain and the lights are a little too bright for that. Well, Let's just go over to the settings here. So you see this setting, the shadow tension. I recommend always um, having that all the way because shadows, realism, or something. Then where you can also you can change the intensity of it, which would obviously change the intensity. You could also change the um, quadratic attention, which is basically intensity but um, a little less. So basically, you can change the intensity and quadratic attention as well. And you could also add colors. So you see color red, color green, color blue. Let's say you want the red color. So you would do green and blue. Then boom. Yeah. And then you got... What I, what I would do is I would like, have to kind of tone down colors. So not exactly those colors, but like kind of those colors. So like, I put like red and, a little bit of red and blue. So I can get a little bit of green. And a little bit of green and blue to get a little bit of red. And then, yeah, so um, the next screen that should show up when you click, so then you're basically done. So after you've done your cool epic swag went render, if you've done all this, you're like, oh, I want to export this. So what you're going to do is click file, export, poster, export poster, and you're going to want to save that. Then you're going to have to, so right here. You click PNG or JPEG, depending on which one you want to do, because, yeah. Um, you, I don't even recommend editing this. Just, yeah. Then um, you're going to go to output file, and then you're going to click wherever you want to be. Alright, once you have um, finished exporting the render, what you're going to want to do is go to some Photoshop app. What I use is Pixlr Pixlr X. I think it's the better pixel in my opinion. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to uh, add a layer. Oh, first of all, you're going to do... Ignore these. <laughs> but what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to um, create new. 
and then I recommend using the 432 by 4032 by 3024. Then you're gonna make it's gonna make a new thing. Then what you're gonna do is add a layer. You're gonna add a layer, and then um, click the um, dread layer. In my case, render, and then depending on which way you um, tilted your camera, you're gonna either put 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees. For me, I it's usually negative 90. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna size it up to about the to fit all corners. And then what you're gonna want to do this is very important. So sometimes if you um, go here to like the cutout thing and you go to a hundred, it's gonna do that. Now why? It's because the well he, he has some green. So what you're gonna want to do is go to lower tolerance and then. You could still get about the same effect. There's st there's, there still might be some green screen. If you don't want that, you could we'll raise it up just a bit. Not too much, because if you raise it up too much, then uh, it might uh, get rid of a lot of stuff. And that's not good for a render. Uh, then you just gotta do some touch ups. And then apply cutout. Then what you can do? Then what you do is size it up, uh, then crop it a bit, and then you're done. And then you save it, and then you're done. Uh, thanks for watching this funny tutorial. This render, if you want to use it for some reason, will be on my DeviantArt. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Happy New Year's. <laughs>